Well, glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. I was up to uh, Fort Fairfield last uh, two weeks ago now, and um, we there's this property I was looking at, and um, and on the edge of the field there, there's a big field there that's been all plowed up and planted. I think it's winter wheat. Um, there was this thing laying in, down there, all crushed. And I pulled it out and asked permission to bring it home. Um, turns out it's an old aluminum tea thing, but it's all crushed, so it's, no, it's of no, no use in a kitchen. So, glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit. So I thought, well, um, why not throw it in the garden up here? Um, a few artifacts here and there and everywhere. Let's see. Well, maybe they'll go right there. Listen, I, I want to take you up around and show you the work that I did yesterday. Look at those marigolds coming up. Oh my goodness, isn't that beautiful? Found out I had to replant this other marigold bed because the slugs got at it. So I'm like, hey, what happened to all my sprouts? And the slugs had gotten in there and eaten them on me. So huh, had to replant the whole bed. I put enough seed in there probably to cover this whole hill. Look down here to see the latest progress on the work down here. I managed to succeed in removing all of the visible roots that I could find, plus the uh, all the bamboo, uh, aka knotweed. Today we'll show you, boy, what a pile of roots came out of there. I mean, that's not just knotweed. That's uh, some of that kind of wild pea stuff that takes over. Let that dry out, and I'll put it right down there in the fire pit. And you know, the funniest part is, it, that's the third group. Here's another group over here. We're drying out on the rock over here. Probably I'll take them down and move these over there. Once they get dry, then I can just burn them. So, but um, now, now the trick is to come out here for the rest of the summer, remaining of the summer until fall when everything quits growing and dig any sprouts out of here. If I see any coming up, I've got to go to town and dig until no more of them are coming out of here. Um, now, as I said, knotweed can't really truly be eradicated. Once it gets on your property, there's no going back after that. You let it get a an established colony. The roots underneath these trees, and that tree, that, that plants are so big, they're actual trees here. It's hard, it's rock hard. And so the roots are very, uh, I would say, very useful. Um, so... I'm looking into uh, uh, techniques and science, the science of controlling the knotweed because knotweed, once it gets in, it's, it's in forever. But you can find areas that you want to keep knotweed out of and pull all the roots and keep doing this, rooting them out. Once you see sprouts coming up, you go right through and you start working on it. The reason why I got these dug into holes is because uh, I don't want to get down to the bedrock. This is where the main root was coming. And I noticed right here that there's some right here, see? A piece like that will actually grow a new plant, believe it or not. It's crazy stuff. Just a little half inch piece will grow you a new plant. Oh, look at this, see there's one more right there that I haven't gotten. Am I getting it in there? Oh, there it is, okay. That's a, I'm, I'm the camera guy. <laughs> um, now, this trench here is with, there's a root connected to that. And this is another type of plant that, that just literally just sends roots through the ground. And this is kind of a nuisance when you, it's young, as you can see. Uh, it's very stickery. Let me get a close-up of those or not. Let's see. Yeah, right there. Look at that. And that that's, goodness, you, I'll tell you one thing. You don't want to get, <laughs> you don't want to go charging down through the middle of these, I'll tell you. <laughs> you will pay the price for it. So far, um, I have a little bit of knotweed coming up on this uh, rock face, and I can't get to it right now because the stuff is in the way, but as soon as that stuff is moved, then I get in here and work and uh, start removing that from the rock face. But uh, about the only thing a person can do is just let it grow where it wants, you know, where you, you know, it's out away from you and for what you want to do and just control it where you don't want it to be. Uh, and I, as I said, I can't say this enough to you that uh, knotweed is really actually quite a beautiful plant. It's not really as noxious, with the exception that it does take right over, uh, of a plant. It's a highly edible plant, and it's medicinal. Knotweed is used in the treatment, in the root of it, the bark on the roots, is used in a treatment for Lyme's disease. So keep bear that in mind. 
when a person says that this is an obnoxious plant, that this is medicine, medicinal to Lyme disease. And I, I suspect in other tick-borne bacteria. It's antibacterial and antiviral, I'm thinking. That's what it says in the information online. So um, medicine is being made to treat Lyme and other bacterial infections from the root. And now the flowers, now that's another matter with this this uh, so-called obnoxious weed, is that the flowers are very attractive to the bees. Bees love them. And you come up here when it's flowering and there'll be thousands and thousands of different kind of bees up here. Bumblebees, honeybees, everything you can imagine. We'll be flying around the flowers on this stuff. And I literally cut a path down through the middle of this forest. It was a forest all the way to the the street's not too, the upper street's not too far up that way. Oh, my guess is probably 20 feet, 15. More like 20 feet from here is, is the street. So this forest went all the way up through. And uh, see, here's an example of me controlling the knotweed. Now, I don't care if it grows along the side of here. I trim it and prune it so they won't grow out into the pathway, so I won't run my face into it. See, like that one there is getting kind of near to... So all oh, basically what I need to do is just yank that right up. Comes up pretty easy. I throw it in there. I got a pile of them already. Yeah. Eventually that'll all decay down, become new soil. Anything that's like protruding into the pathway, I just start getting rid of. And whatever comes off, of course, I gotta take a hand on. So it's okay. The not I'm in. What do I expect? I'm in a knotweed forest here. Look at it all. See, it's just. A complete thicket. Really good security. Not too many people would want to walk down through the middle of that. So it's really good if you if you need security around your property to have this stuff to grow around the edges. Because it keeps out. Makes a nice fence. Put it that way. Now, um, I, I come up here. I notice some of my treads on my stone stairway here were moving around. So basically what I'm going to be doing is... Uh, Going right up through here, I'm driving stakes into the ground. I'm attaching uh, cross members so that they can go crossways in the front of these uh, treads to this thing. Um, yeah, so that'd be one of my projects. My next project is to get this all set up. Probably I'll run that right down around the corner. See, I got that propped up there for the moment. So, but anyway, probably what I'll end up doing is probably driving it in like that. I'm putting stakes in the ground all the way around it. And that, that's a hook for this. Um, not quite sure how I'm going to line that up yet, but uh, that one, that tread right there has got to be worked on pretty quick. So I'll probably have to go get some deck screws and start working this out here. But I did set different stones in up above, like that. That's a pretty more solid stone than the one that was in it. Um, there's another stone over there that could be used in here too, as well. It's just been laying there for when I'm ready for it. Uh, I'm not sure, but that might fit down in that gap right there, that stone there. So I bring my trowel up here and start cleaning that out and setting that stone in there. I'm pointing right in. I'm pointing the finger, but I'm not really aiming the camera. See, this is what I'm saying. There's no excuse for this kind of filming. I mean, well, not filming, but this kind of, uh, what is the term? I'm not filming anything electronically filming stuff, I guess, would be a better term. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, don't that all pretty? Don't that lovely, huh? Well, we'll take a look, see how the hops are coming along here. Of course, I already know the answer to this question, how are the hops doing? But if you're new to this program or if you're watching this video, uh, you'll see that uh, I mean, this is an experiment in... Uh, the growing of hops and the harvesting and the processing of hops. This is my little experimental ground because later on I plan on, I'd like to be able to do it and raise enough hops to be sold. But look at that thing. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh my goodness. They are pretty. You got to give it that. They are pretty. That's what this pathway was made for, was to be able to enable me to get up here and tend these hops without having to walk down to the corner down here and coming up to the top street. 
figure, well, why don't I just clear myself out a little pathway? Turns out all this stuff up through here is just nothing but river, uh, road sand that's been thrown off over here. And they scoop it up. I think they just threw it off the edge. It's all gravel and sand. So there was no need to really pave this. It's hard to rock now. I walk down through here and it's hard as a rock. Packs right in good. I may want to uh, dig some of that up along the edges there and bring it down here and put it in these, these bricks and pack it all in. I may want to do that. Well, I'm having a ball with it. I'm going to say hello to my friends out there on, in uh, this limited small YouTube channel. And I apologize for the amateur quality of my videos I, I'm just using my smartphone you know that listen uh, I drank a whole bunch of that smart water and didn't help much and so I get on this smartphone and I'm like yeah you're a smart aleck phone <laughs> smart aleck phone smartphone for a dumb human I see it. I have to work on that a little bit. Maybe I can bind that up somehow. I might wire that. That should work. But right, look at I did some more work on my. Let me give you a good view of it. Did some more work on my little railing thing to go up through here. So, um, anyway, that's what I got going on for the moment. Um, Down in there, I want that to all flower before I go cutting it down. I'm not sure what those are going to turn into. Could be goldenrod. The goldenrod is just as pretty as any other flower, from what, uh, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I go to, out to the goldenrod, and there must be every form of insects out there feeding on the nectar on that thing. I saw some gorgeous, gorgeous insects out there in the patch of goldenrod. I could go out there and sit all day and just watch them. Maybe. Uh, <clears throat> when there are some really significant patches of goldenrod blooming, I'll have to get out here and get a video of it, as I will with the uh, bees that are that are attracted to this knotweed uh, here, the flowers of the knotweed. I will get out and see if I can find some good, shall I say, footage. I can't because it's not really a tape. But could I say, uh, I don't know, <laughs> some minutes. How, how about that? A few minutes of uh, insects flying in the goldenrod. Yeah. Okay. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Now and ever and under ages of ages. Amen.